You're listening to a message by Pastor Scott Hogue at Cornerstone Community Church in Manteca, California. For more information on the church and what's happening here, visit cornerstonemanteca.com. I got a stool. Is it okay if I sit on a stool today? I'm going to share some things with you that it's a little bit um, out of the ordinary, but I wanted to share them with you kind of in a different way. I'm going to tell you some stories about me, and uh, it will all lead up to um, this vision that I believe that God has given to me. For the church, um, but I, I don't know, do you, I, I'm so glad to be in church today. I mean, thinking about church and what church means, um, it's important to be in church, amen? amen? I know some of you are like, man, this is my first time in church uh, today. I'm just visiting. I'm not really sure what this church is all about. This is a pretty unusual day. This is, uh, we normally don't all of us wear pink, but uh, we're wearing pink today, and, and this is Vision Sunday, so there's a lot that's happening this morning, um, but uh, church is very important, and whether this is your first time or you've been here for a long time, um, this is a top priority for us, and, and as I share about um, church and my experiences with church growing up, I would hope that you would hear my heartbeat, that it is important that, um, that you bring your family to church, that you bring your children to church. How many of you know kids need God's Word in their lives? Amen? So it's very, very important. Um, I, I know that uh, Pastor Travis mentioned about the Faith Forward cards. Uh, we are going to be turning these in at the end of the service. That's what these bowls are here. So um, hopefully you can take this card if you haven't already and fill that out, perhaps while I'm talking. I know some of you have already turned that in uh, in previous weeks, and we have those amounts already. But uh, we'll be collecting these toward the end of the service. But let's talk about church. I have some, I don't want to make it like a slideshow today of myself, but I, I do have some slides. Is that okay? I'm not going to be like, next slide, please. Next, I'm not going to do that. But um, uh, I went to church um, it, 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 when I was younger. Um, I was born in Gooding, Idaho. And, and I have a rich heritage of, um, of people in my family that um, were very active in church. My grandparents were very active. Their parents were very active. And, and for some reason, we found our way into the Assemblies of God, of which this church is a part of. And um, uh, in Gooding, Idaho, let's show it on the screen. This is where I went to church um, my first few years of my life. Um, it, it, I don't remember it looking like that. I think they did, uh, did some things to it. There's no grass. I remember grass. There was, there was grass there. Um, I remember having a lot of fun. I remember um, it had a basement. Like, that's where we, like, hung out and did, like, kids' church and stuff. Um, but I, I remember that. I have a lot of memories there. That's where they showed the, the movie. Um, you know that scary movie? What was that called? Thief in the Night? Did anybody ever see that? You, you know what I'm talking about? Thief in the Night? They used it to scare us kids about Jesus coming back, and it was horrible. And um, it, there was a, a song in there. What was that song you guys used to sing at Jamie to us to scare me to death? I, I was like, um, two men walking up a hill, one was on and the other left behind. I wish we all been ready. I thought Jesus was coming back every day. It scared me. But that happened in that little church. And um, anyways, we, uh, we transferred out of Gooding, we moved to California, and we started attending a church, uh, I don't have a slide of that, but we started atten attending a church in Hayward um, called Bethel Temple. Anybody from Hayward, anybody know, the, really, you guys know that church, Bethel Hayward? Really? Uh, yeah. We went to church there for a little bit. Um, uh, Pastor Ron Ballou wa was pastoring there, and I remember going to Sunday school, and Sunday school was, is, was a little bit fearful for me. Um, there was some little, there was a few strange crackers that were teaching the, the Sunday school department there, and they made us sing, Do Lord, Do Lord, Do You Remember Me? Constantly, Do Lord, Oh, Do Lord, Oh, Do You. Do you remember that song, anybody? Yeah? Yeah, that was a, one of the top ten uh, that I remember. And I remember um, Jesus Loves the Little Children, loved that song. So lots of memories there. Um, and then we transferred over to Fremont, Fremont First Assembly. Anybody from Fremont? Fremont First Assembly of God Church, um, which was a, a larger church, and uh, got involved there. And I remember um, 
uh, I remember so many things. I remember my, my grandparents were very active there. I remember hearing stories of faith where people would come up and give testimonies about God and, and His grace and, and, and miracles. I remember hearing um, the, the, the gifts of the Spirit in operation, and, and my faith really grew. And I remember the pastor, Pastor Gori, Pastor Cloud, Pastor Gori, and I remember the, their movements, you know, the rocking, you know, back and forth on the pulpit. And I remember how Pastor Gori used to start off really slow, and then he'd, he'd go up and I'd crescendo to the anointing, you know what I'm talking about. And I remember that thinking, man, he's a man of God. I remember my faith being built up, and it was, I, I felt so excited, especially at Easter. I remember the Easter productions, and I remember uh, seeing uh, even the slides of, of Jesus and, and being, uh, Jesus being risen from the dead. I thought, how awesome was that, that Jesus died and he rose again from the grave? That story to me never got old, and I loved it. I loved it. I loved being there. I loved church. But I also remember times, especially when I was going to, to, to children's church and to Sunday school, and I remember, guy, this is boring. Come on, let's be honest. I mean, some of our kids, we, we grew up, and you grew up, and it's some of the reason why you went away from the Lord is because it, it, it wasn't portrayed well. I remember going to church, and I thought, man, something needs to happen here. There, 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 why does church have to be boring? Why do we have to just sit here with our hands folded? Why can't we do something? Why can't we be active? There, there, this, this should be an atmosphere. Children's church should be an atmosphere of love and acceptance, a place where they could discover what they're good at, Right? People need to discover their gifts and their talents, and, and kids, too. When I was 15 years old, I thought I was pretty cool. Um, I remember my mom uh, and dad made me go to a, a church camp, um, and I really didn't want to go, and, and, and I went. And I remember, you know, every night it was the same story. The speaker got up, shared, there was music, and, and I sat in the back row, and I remember those cool 80s glasses, you know. I think they came back in style. I think I got a pair now, but um, I remember sitting in the back and folding my arms and like, you know what, I'm over this, you know. Yeah, I know God, it's fine, you know, but I'm over all of this. And, and I remember the speaker, and some of you have heard this story, I remember the speaker talking about God's calling on your life and how God can speak to you and call you. And, and, and he said these words, and it's as if he was prophesying over all of us, and he said, and some of you, God is speaking to you right now and calling you into ministry. And I put my head down, and all of a sudden, I, I sensed something that I'd never sensed before in my life. In fact, as I closed my eyes, I could almost envision, I saw this, this, this cloud that was so bright, and I saw two hands coming out of this cloud, and, and I heard God's voice, not an audible voice, but I heard a voice inside of my spirit saying, I've called you, and I've separated you to do my work. And I thought, God, is that you? And I, I began to cry. I, I began to, 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 to kind of cower down a little bit. And, and the speaker said, I, I want those of you whom God is speaking to right now, would you stand up and would you come to the front? And I thought, oh, I, I, I can't come to the front. And you got to understand, guys, I was an extremely shy kid. I, 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 I really didn't, didn't do well in crowds and groups. And, but God said, I want you to go up. And I went to the front, and, and, and Jesus baptized me in the Holy Spirit there, and God affirmed that, yes, he was calling me into ministry. It was absolutely incredible. That's when I was 15 years old. That next year, God called me to, to do some things, some things that I had never done before. You see, at that age, I wanted to be popular, Right? I mean, you, you want kids to look at you and think, oh, you're cool, you're awesome. I decided that I wanted to, to go into a, a, a drama ministry um, group that the school was offering. I went to a Christian school, and so I signed up to be in parable. 
it was a drama ministry group, and, and I didn't know how to act. I mean, I was afraid of my own shadow. I mean, you guys, you have to understand, I was one of those kids that felt so inadequate, that felt like, um, like I, 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 I wasn't important, that I was worthless, that um, I, I was so, I was kind of a weird kid. I mean, I, at one point, I thought I was allergic to burps. I, I was just a strange kid. It, well, I was just weird. And, and um, anyways, that's a whole other story. But I, I felt very inadequate. And, and so I signed up to be a part of this ministry team. And, and to my surprise, I, 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 I got up on stage and they taught me how to act. They taught me how to do skits. They taught me how to sing. They taught me all of these things. They taught me even how to stand by myself and to give a testimony. And we traveled around to different churches. We went to Europe. We went to Germany. We went to England. We did street ministry. And I was like amazed. I could feel the anointing of God in my life. It was an awesome thing. And, and, and my, my, my insecurity started to change into confidence. And that doesn't mean that I still don't have insecurities. Practically every Sunday morning, I, I, I get real sick before I come up here, and even though I'm prepared. But it's the anointing of God. It's the confidence that God has given. And so at, at the end of my school years, I, I decided to go to college. Everybody was saying, where do you want to go to college? And everybody was making plans. I knew God had called me. So I signed up. I went to Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas. And then I went to um, Heritage Bible Training in Fremont. And I went to Bethany College, Bible College in Santa Cruz. And, and all this start, stuff started to come together. While I was in college, I felt like God was speaking to me and, and, and saying, you know what, Scott, I want you to step out of the box it's faith to, to start doing things that, that are unusual that I want you to do. And so I signed up to be a ministry leader. I signed up to, to create a team to go into public schools, to, to elementary schools, and to start uh, like churches, like kids' church in public schools. I was so daring. I, I felt like that God gave me this boldness. We had so many kids. And then God called me to start a church, a kids' church in an apartment complex a low-income apartment complex in San Jose. And I got a team together, and it started to grow, and we started to have 100 kids. Then their parents started to come, and it was so exciting to see all that God was doing. But the driving force, I want you to hear this today, because I'm going somewhere with it. The driving force within me that always stuck with me was that I never wanted church to be boring. I never wanted people to think this is the lamest thing I've ever seen or been a part of. I wanted the gospel to come alive. I wanted people to understand that Jesus could change their lives, even speaking to children and to youth and to young adults. I wanted people to know it was the power of the cross that could change their lives. I wanted to create an atmosphere where kids would be loved, in a non-threatening, fun-filled way. I wanted them to know that they were created for a purpose, that when they were born, God knew it, and God designed them and created them and made them for such a time as when they were born, that God loved them so much that he wanted to have a relationship with them. I wanted to create ministries that allowed kids to use their gifts Whatever their gifts were, I wanted every kid to feel important, to feel belonged. In 1993, Michelle and I got married. I'm not sure if you, there we are. <laughs> I'm not sure if you realize this or not, but Michelle is a graduate of Pepperdine University, and she, her whole heart's desire was to become an actress extremely gifted. Talk about smart. I mean, she finished Pepperdine University in three years. She, she was so creative and so, so awesome in every way. And, and, and she was majoring in theater. And, and um, we dated for a while. And um, God shifted her heart, shifted her desires. A beautiful, beautiful thing what God did, how God orchestrated all that, all that and called her specifically into ministry. When we got married, it was like, man, we're, we're going to do this. And, and we were young, and, and um, 
I was on staff at Fremont for assembly and overseeing about 300 kids, and uh, Michelle jumped right in. We created a ministry that was a really unique. It was called Charisma Kids. We took a group of uh, fourth and fifth graders specifically uh, who wanted to sign up and audition for this, and, and we, we took them and we trained them and discipled them and, and taught them um, how to uh, get up in front of people and to give their testimonies. And we would travel around to different places around Northern California, Southern California, Arizona, and we started to see kids' lives changed. We started to see them blossom. Kids that were so shy, kids that felt they were so inadequate, get up and, and to see people respond to children. We would line the children up after they would perform and minister, and we would have altar calls. And people would come to these altars, and children would lay their hands on people, and we would see people healed and come to the Lord. It was absolutely incredible. It was, it was awesome what God was doing. Guys, there is no greater joy for us to see people being used in ministry, whether they're children or youth or young adults, adults, senior adults, for us to see people active and using their gifts in ministry is such a, a thrill for Michelle and I and for our staff here at Cornerstone. When we came to Cornerstone in 2001, God began to speak to me out of the book of Ezra. If you have your Bible, you can turn there because we're not going to go through all the book, but I just want to point out real quickly that in that book, God specifically spoke to Ezra that God would supply people and resources for him to accomplish the task that he gave to him to rebuild the walls. And God gave me that word saying, if you take this step of faith, because it was a huge step of faith coming from Fremont, which was a large church to Cornerstone uh, Community Church. Do we have that slide up there? there it, come, coming to Cornerstone and you know, coming there with only 75 people. It was a huge step of faith. But God says, if you take those steps, I will bring people that will come alongside of you, that will help you. Resources will be brought to you to accomplish the vision that I give to you. And then there was a verse that stood out like you would not believe. It was, it's Ezra 10.4. Ezra 10.4. Look at that verse on the screen. Rise up, take courage, and do it. All right, I guess there's not a stronger word, God, you could give me. Do it. See, guys, when you hear from God, and listen, this is for you. When you hear from God to do something specific, whether it's to speak to somebody about the Lord or do something or to act in generosity towards someone, don't wait, don't hesitate. Do what God has called you to do and let Him do the work. Sometimes we think that we have to have all the power and all the resources and all the knowledge to do what God has called us to do. Guys, you don't. It's God working through you. It's the Holy Spirit working through you to accomplish His desires. This is not my church. This church belongs to Jesus Christ. Jesus gives me the vision. He gives us the vision as leaders. We move forward, and he does the work. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that God adds to the church. We don't add to the church. God adds to the church for his glory. The church is the heartbeat of God. God chose the church to be a vehicle to minister to the world. If not the church, then who? So we began to create ministries within Cornerstone, avenues through worship and music and drama, creative outreaches through, through, through going out into the community, discipleship classes, interest groups, fellowship and mission trips, starting a preschool, starting an elementary school, all of it driven by the creative forces of the Holy Spirit in order to connect people, boys and girls, teenagers, adults, senior adults, to Jesus Christ. 
and all the while making relationships the top priority of every single thing that we do here. I don't know if you realize it or not, but we need good relationships. Some of you are stuck in some real crummy relationships right now, some unhealthy relationships. Don't hit your, your husband, guys, or your wives. <laughs> You're stuck with them. We're going to work on that later. But God wants us to have healthy relationships. Cornerstone needs to be a place where healthy relationships flourish. It has been so exciting to see the journey, <laughs> to see God's promises. They are yes and amen. To see his promises of, of adding to the church, of raising up leaders. I want to tell you specifically today as we jump into this definition of what church is, that God has been faithful. God has raised up leaders here, raised up leaders like Douglas and Kristen Scott. Wow! Wow! Where did they come from? Don't they look awesome in their pink today, by the way? I mean, they, they're such an awesome, awesome family, awesome leaders. Don't know what I'd do without them. People like Robert Henson, people like Travis, people, people that, that are come, like Lillian and Jack Cushman. Where did they come from? Lillian's 85, she just had a birthday, 85 years old. She's running the Helping Hands Ministry. The, the Helping Hands ministry is right outside my office, and I hear regularly all the time her organizing and moving stuff around, and she's acting like she's a teenager in there. God has blessed us. God has blessed us with resources. But I want to give you, before I give you this vision, I want to give you a definition of what the church is and what it's supposed to be. Would you look on the screen? The church is the body of Christ. A group of people unified under Christ who represent and reflect him to the world. Isn't that good? Look at that. That represent him to the world. The church should be a place where we train people. We train all kinds of people who have given their heart to Christ. We train them to do the work of the Lord, both within the church itself and outside of these walls. Why? To bring people to Jesus Christ. And the purpose of the church, here's the purpose, is that we would fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave to us, to go into all the world and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Guys, Jesus is coming back. We have got to be an active church. We talked about being stagnant last week. God did not call us to be stagnant in our spirit. He called us to be a rushing, mighty river a force throughout the world to show the, the, that Jesus Christ is the answer that the world needs. Philippians 2.15 tells us to be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. How many of you know that we're living in a twisted generation right now? Things couldn't get worse. Well, they, they can. Hold on to your seat. Whether we're sharing Christ to people in our neighborhoods or we're sending others to foreign lands, the church is called to action. Action. Our mission at Cornerstone Community Church is to serve people. Why? Because we love people. We love people the way that Christ loved people, loves people. It's centered around loving people when they least expect it. It's all about growing and learning to be just like him, to be like Jesus, to let our light shine brighter so that men and women and boys and girls can see who we are and give glory to God. Guys, we are the church. We are his hands. We are his feet. We need to be active and show the world who Jesus Christ is. I believe we are at a turning point, like I said a few weeks ago, a turning point at Cornerstone where God is getting ready to do some greater things some things that we have not experienced yet. And the things that I'm going to share with you are the desires that God has put into my heart. These things have not yet happened yet, but I believe they will happen. And it's all contingent upon all of us working together for His glory. 
coming together and say, yep, I believe in it. Let's do it together. It's all about this. It's all contingent upon this. This is not a campaign, this faith for This is not a campaign. I'm not asking you to do something that, that's out of the ordinary. I'm just asking you to do what God has already called us to do in his word. This is all a part of God's will, that we be faithful in our tithe, that we be faithful in giving the Lord 10% of everything that we receive, all of our income, where your treasure is, there your heart will be, and vice versa. Where is your heart today? Is it in line with the Lord? This is not a campaign. This is something that I believe that God wants all believers to participate in. So we'll set that aside just for a minute. I want to talk a little bit about this, this vision that God has given to me. And as I share it, again, these are the desires the Lord has put into my heart and um, I believe that it will happen in his timing, and I believe that it will happen very soon. Here's what I believe God wants us to do, is to have a creative arts center. A creative arts center. What does that mean, Pastor Scott? That sounds so, like, big and awesome and, and, and so um, kind of funneled, like narrow a little bit. I don't know if you're familiar with the Boys and Girls Club. They have them in almost every city or the YMCA, what the YMCA used to look like. But I believe that God is calling us to have an after-school program for kindergarten through 12th grade. What does that look like? I'm not really quite sure. I've got little pieces of what I think it looks like, but I'm envisioning having a center where we train kids to lead in worship, to play instruments for worship, that we teach kids how to sing, vocals, that we teach kids all about music for the purpose of building the kingdom of God. We want to train, we want to mentor, we want to disciple. We also want to train kids in media. We want them to learn how to do um, uh, visuals on the screen and lighting and sound, all of that. We want kids to learn how to do that. And so we'll have special classes and groups that will, will teach kids to do that. I'm envisioning these rooms, like a drum, like three or four drum rooms, uh, 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 guitar rooms, um, uh, vocal rooms, piano rooms. I'm envisioning all of this where we, we have these special teachers and mentors that will teach kids specifically, not just so that they can go out into the world and play in a band or in a coffee shop or in a bar someday, but they would use their gifts on stage in the church and they would use their gifts out in the world to bring people to Jesus Christ through the vehicle of worship. Another area is drama. Drama is big. I don't know if you realize this, but we have been doing productions, drama productions for kids and young adults for, for quite some time, for a few years. I believe God is wanting us to step it up. We have seen lots of families who would never, ever come to a church building, come to a church building because we are bringing their children in and teaching them how to do drama, how to sing, putting them on stage, introducing them to Christ through relationships. Many people in this church, even this service right now, have found Christ because of this ministry of theater. Visual art, drawing, painting, oils, acrylics, graphics on the computer, teaching kids how to do that, photography. I mean, the sky is the limit, guys. This is an absolutely incredible vision that God has given to me. How will it happen? I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but I'm going to move forward with it. I believe God is going to send people to help me. I believe resources will be brought in for us to accomplish this vision so that boys and girls and teenagers can come to know Christ and their families can come to know Christ. I'm going to tell you something about the theater and the creative arts out in the world. If they're not going to come to a church, do you know where they're going to get it? That training? Through other sources. Hollywood. And isn't Hollywood doing such a great job right now, right? We want to bring those kids in and introduce them to Christ 
and to, to make their lives count for the glory of God. And so in doing that, we're going to expand our space. We're going to expand our space. Is, is that the next one there? Or is it the staff? Oh, there, there it is. Expanding our staff. So what we want to do is we want to, um, the staff, we want to have an executive ministry director. I'm going crazy as it is right now. I need a lot of help. We have a lot of ministries. We have a lot of things happening, especially as we move into this area of the creative arts. We're going to need some more help here. And so I'm praying that we would have a full-time executive ministry director. I'm also praying that we would have a pastor of senior adults. I need someone to help me with our senior adults. It is such a vital ministry of this church. I need someone who can help me make pastoral calls, who can go into the hospitals, who can minister that way and to the families. I also want to create a senior adult service. Amen. Thank you. I want to have a special service just for senior adults that would ha contain worship, that would contain preaching. It would be a midweek service. I don't know what day, but it would probably be on a Thursday or something like that. I don't want to take the place of any kind of small group that's happening right now, but I believe that, that we cannot neglect those that are up in age that, that want to have a community uh, uh, within themselves that would also uh, be, be a, a, a community that would serve the rest of the church. Every ministry that we have, including our seniors, senior adults, all of them need to be looking outward on how to mentor, how to help the younger generation as well. Amen? Amen. So in doing that, we're going to also need to expand our space. Expand our space. So when we have all these kids coming in, these teenagers and, and all these new families coming in, we're going to need to prepare for growth. We're going to need a larger area for our kids' ministry. I'm envisioning large rooms with a large foyer for kids, receiving area, uh, play areas. We're also needing uh, a space for our youth ministries where they can grow and, 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 and do life together, hangout areas where there can be ministry. Also, we're wanting to create larger fellowship areas, both inside and outside, because relationships, again, are the forefront of everything that we do. I want to have some really cool areas outside with, with cool tables and maybe, you know, fire pits or something. I mean, I, the vision just goes on and on. I want areas like uh, where people can mingle around tables and share and do life together. I, I, we need a kitchen, guys. The kitchen that we have, yeah, is, is not really a kitchen. It's got some counters and a, and a microwave and a sink, and it, it has served us well. But we need a commercial kitchen. I believe God is wanting us to do more for the community. I believe that God wants us to open up our doors wide and enhance our helping hands ministry, to do dinners in here or wherever our large space is going to be, and, and, and just to do more for the community. But I think we can do that through a commercial kitchen. Amen? There's a lot, okay, a lot on you. These are some of the things that God has dropped into my spirit that I hope that you would catch that vision as well. And some of you are like, well, what about sports? And what about this? Look, guys, I, I, we're going to do elements of that as well. But I believe that God gives a personality to every church. We cannot be everything to the world, all right? But I believe that God puts people together for a reason, for such a time as this, and God begins to do the things that, that he desires. And, and we feel like creative arts is one of those. We feel like doing more outreaches and, our, and increasing our senior adult ministry. All of that is going to happen as we are faithful to him. Amen? All right. So where do, we, where do we go now? Some of you say, well, what about the land, Pastor? What about the buildings? What are you guys doing? Are, are we going to move? What's, what's happening? I can tell you with all honesty that we are still looking we have real estate agents that we are, are talking with that are searching out um, properties, uh, land, as well as uh, buildings. Um, we are moving forward with that. Um, but the concentration right now is to get part of our debt down so that we can move, that er move in that area. 
And, and like I explained to the board as we met on Wednesday, all of this happens simultaneously together. We don't stop doing ministry. We don't stop increasing our ministry and the capacity that we have with ministry just because we want the debt down, all right? It all happens together so that we can bring uh, more people, introduce more people to Christ, and at the same time, we're knocking down this debt, and at the same time, we're moving forward, seeking out other areas uh, that the Lord would open up for us, all right? We have a lot of rooms here, and all of them are filled. This room that you're sitting in right now will be torn down tomorrow. It will be torn down, it will be set up, it will be torn down again and set up and torn down again and set up. This room is used nonstop. We have the gathering room that's used about five or six times throughout the week. Nonstop. All of our rooms are, are, are maxed out. God wants to increase our borders. He wants to increase the amount of space that we need for the growth that he wants to accomplish. How many of you would pray with me over these next few weeks and months that God would have to have this happen. Would you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Pastor Travis is coming, and, and as he comes, and, and he's going to sing um, the song that we just sang a moment ago, I believe that, that God is going to meet the needs of this church. What a crazy number, $65,000. How'd you get that, Pastor? I don't even know. I, God, God just dropped it in my spirit based upon what we've brought in over the past few months and the last year. I believe we can do this as a church. $65,000 a month. We've had cards come in. People have dropped their cards in. They wrote it down. They tore it off. They put their name on here, and they said, I'm going to tithe this amount. And some people said, I'm not able to tithe right now, but I'm going to give this amount, okay? And whatever that amount is, it's between you and the Lord, all right? And then there's a place for missions on there as well. And people have turned this in, and, and we've calculated them. And my heart kind of dropped because I'm introducing it to you today. And it's not that it's bad, but it's just not close. <laughs> but um, here's the amount that we're at right now. Right now, presently, we're at $24,147. It's a little bit of ways from $65,000, is not it? God said, don't look at that number. I'm going to do some things. Don't look at that number. God, I got to look at the number because that's our goal. God says, I'm going to do it. You look at the back of your bulletin right now, all of that's going to change next week. That, the back, look at it now. The back of your bulletin, that amount that has come in, we have five weeks in October. This is the fourth week of October. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday. I love, the, I, love Sunday, I love months where there's five Sundays because there's more income that comes in for the church. Now, you'll see that number grow next week, and you'll see it grow the following week. Can we hit 65? I don't know. But I'm going to believe that God is, has it, has this church, and we're going to see it happen. All right? So here's, here's the thing. If you have not already given this card in the offering, would you consider doing that this morning and place it in, in one of these uh, bowls right up here? Um, why don't you stand to your feet and let, let's pray. And let's ask God to, to make all this happen. This is his church. God, thank you. God, even as I jumped off that stool, I know, God, that you're in charge, God. I give you full reign, God. This church belongs to you, everything about it, every ministry, every ministry leader, God. This is all yours. We're working for your kingdom. And so, God, I pray that you would speak into the hearts of every individual, every couple, every household. Lord, an amount, God. Lord, we're praying that people would rise to the occasion and respond to your word to give 10%. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, as we're faithful to you. Your word tells us, you promise us, that you will open up the windows of heaven and you will pour out a blessing that we cannot even contain. Lord, would you do that in the heart of every single person that responds in obedience today and will praise you and will give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen. Amen. Would you come and bring your
bring your cards to the front. And next week, the youth worship team is going to be up here. And I just have to say this about Pastor Travis, is that he is a mentor and a trainer of kids. Um, he just doesn't have a couple of people up here on, on Wednesday night leading worship. He has 15 kids on the stage leading worship. Ask, come on, let's, let's give him a hand. 15. Whether it's playing guitar or drums or the cajon or the flute or, or the bass or, or whatever, or vocals, all of them, or, or the ukulele, all of them. It's part of this, this worship vision that we all have here. And I'm excited to be able to, uh, to see that next week. And, and you know what? He needs help. And you know what's so cool? I was talking to Pastor Travis and, and talking to the, to the board on Wednesday that God is bringing people here. God is bringing resources here already that we don't even know. Some of you don't even realize what God is doing, how God is bringing those things together for such a time as this. Remember, this is all God's design. God brings it together. And God brings things together in your life. Trust Him. Everything that happens, all the good, all the bad, all happens for a reason, to funnel you into His will so that He can accomplish His purposes in your life for His kingdom's sake. Let Him do that. Watch this week. Ask him to show you some things in your own life. God, what is a vision for my life? What does next year look like? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to be next year? Ask God, and God will speak to you. Amen? We have a total that I want to give to you today, and there's a couple more. I was telling uh, early service that, that Douglas is a, a real master at counting, and um, he's going to add all those extra ones in his head right now. <laughs> and give it to us. Okay, so... Okay, so the amount that, that have, that's come in just for this service alone is, is $10,000. Just this, just this service right here, all right? So right now, we're at $32,000, all right? Now... That, that may seem low to you, but that excites me because we still have people that, that give on a regular basis, that give every, they're very faithful every month that haven't yet done this, all right? So a lot of you are new to, to tithing. A lot of you are, are stepping out in faith and participating in God's uh, design here, and uh, I'm very hopeful. So will you pray with me this week that God will surprise us and that we'll meet our needs? Amen? Let me pray over you as you leave. God, go with us as we go out these doors. Help us to be light, God, in this dark world. Give us opportunity to shine that light to people who need you. Bless every person in this room. Thank you, God, for your will that is going to be accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.